If your nib's too slow and your ink won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to help you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews. Okay, guys, why don't we go ahead and start up right now. So let me introduce sure. the man, the man of the hour, with all the power, Mr. Tall. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I have been trying to meet this young man for a long time. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I watch his podcast. I, I watch his reviews. I, I watch him here. They're like he's everywhere, you know. It's like, I, I have got to get Tom on here. So finally... Finally, Tom, welcome. So, Tom, uh, for right now, we are recording, and we will put this on my YouTube channel. So, welcome, Tom. So, Tom, tell us, how did you even get started in all this? How did I get started in all this? Uh, way, way back in the day when I was, you know, probably in high school, you know, I went through the aisles at, like, Staples and bought myself a really nice pet. No, I'm just, I'm not going to go that far back. Uh, you, you call me a young man, which I really appreciate because I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm kind of, you know, getting into my, uh, uh, you know, my, my more experienced years. So, uh, but, uh, but like I started with this whole, with, with gold spot, uh, 13 years ago. And, uh, you know, back then it was a lot of, uh, corporate orders and really like, it wasn't so much about the fountain pen as it is today. Uh, but I really got into the whole uh, fountain pen thing and just into all, you know, pens in general. And, uh, you know, I've just been kind of through the ups and downs of things, like with the 2008 uh, housing market crisis and, you know, now today with coronavirus and everything. But, like, we've been through a lot of ups and downs. Uh, and I've really seen it go from, you know, something that was more of a just a luxury item that people would buy is, like, they would for like graduation gifts or like corporate gifts to something that really people truly enjoy uh, a writing experience uh, that, uh, you know, it's just directly connects with just enjoying, you know, putting pen to paper. Uh, I, I was wondering, uh, you're with Ghostpod Pens last year with Ink Journal. Uh, wh which came first and how did it all happen? Well, uh, Ghostpod came first. And, uh, and what happened was a, a few years in, I think it was in 2012, I had an idea for a, a notebook uh, that I wanted to self-publish that would allow you to catalog your pen and ink combinations. It's really, people are just kind of doing it ad hoc, uh, you know, just creating like templates that you would just download and print out on your own. And I wanted to make a, a, an actual published book, like a notebook that would allow you to do that just pre-formatted. Um, so that's when I had me at the Ink Journal and uh, you know, did the copyright for it, published it myself, had it printed myself here in New Jersey, and started to sell them under the inkjournal.com website and Ink Journal brand as my own kind of thing, which, uh, you know, Goldspot, the owners of Goldspot appreciated the, you know, the kind of like the, the entrepreneurship and was like, okay, we're, you know, like, we're cool with you guys doing that. Um, then... I just kind of started to mold it into something that was a little bit more uh, with the whole ink sample thing and the ink flights and stuff. We started doing that almost four years ago. Uh, and, and I kind of like married it to the whole idea of pen and ink collecting, but kind of uh, segmenting it itself to sh like kind of explore all the inks that are around the world. So stuff that you wouldn't normally see on, let's say, uh, a big retailer's website, you know, you, you, we would be going after all those small brands and trying to expose people to various new ink brands that are across the world. So, And you also have something on eBay, do you not? Uh, I mean, well, Goldspot's on eBay, uh, but, uh, but that's kind of just considered to be a separate marketing arm or a separate sales channel uh, to our website. And then also there's the you know, version... Uh, lost your audio there. Uh, losing your audio. Testing. Oh, 
You there? Any microphone? Hold on one there second. You there Sorry, you just you're my there. earbud just like failed on me for a second. Okay. I have here. What? Why do you need to use the earbud? Just use the regular volume. Oh, because I can't. Because then it would have like an echo. One second. Let me see if I can. Always a learning curve on these things, and uh, I'll be an expert. Do we have a regular? Do we have a regular pair of like earphones that have like the the audio jack, the mic, the mic jack? The kids mic. Can can uh? Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this. In the meantime, down. we do hear you. I'm gonna go on mute for just a second, so I, I figure this out, until I figure this out here. Okay. Okay. While you're doing that, let me talk to the folks on right now. Uh, in the few, uh, I'm going to give uh, anyone on here an opportunity to uh, talk with Tom, ask him any kind of question that you've been wanting to ask or needing to know something about whatever he does or a pen or ink or whatever, you'll have an opportunity to, to interact with Tom. Is that cool? Ink guy is on here as well. If you need to talk to Ink guy, he's right there. He's not bashful. He just looks bashful. Okay, now we're good. Okay. Yeah. All right, Tom. So, uh, where were we at before you got silent? All right. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what happened to this. It just all of a sudden just gave out on me, and I just couldn't hear anything. Okay. So, so okay. I'm looking for a backup just in case it just in case it does go out again. <laughs> okay. Now your ink journal. That's your baby, right? That's that's yours. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and you've had that for how many years now? So uh, the published book was actually from 2012. Uh, so it's been about eight years now. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was going to ask you about, oh, there's a, a new uh, journal coming out oh, by Lucerne. What did you call it? Uh, Lucerne. Yeah, Lucerne. Yeah. Okay. That's coming out. Have you got that yet? And have you reviewed it or what? Oh, thank you. Uh, no, I, I'm not aware of uh, which, which particular one we're talking about. Uh, oh, I think I saw it on your site. Uh, mm. oh, are we talking about uh, the the one that's uh, the nebula, the color the, the one? Planner. Um, does that ring a bell? A planner or something? Uh, no. No. I'm, eh, I'm going know. blank. So anyway. Okay, guys. Hey, I'm going to turn this over to the gang here. So there's Tom right there. Anybody want to ask Tom a question? Hey, raise your hand so we uh, we can let you talk to him because if we have too many people talking at one time, it's all going to be bad. Okay, anybody up to <laughs> ask Tom a question? Don't be bashful. Go ahead. A question from Ben. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Yeah. He's, he's oh, thanks. Hey, and I, I just... First of all, just want to say thank you so much for letting me join you guys. This is so awesome. I've been missing pen shows, pen meetups. It's been hard, like it's been hard for everybody. But man, am I excited? I just got in. Uh, I I just emailed Tom out of the blue. He said, "Join us in in forty five minutes, and I get to be on a pen meetup." I don't know. This is awesome. And Larry, I've seen your videos online. This is like awesome. What a what a treat. My name's Ben Margolis. I'm a I'm a nurse psychiatrist and uh, and and pen obsessed. Well, if, um, you need a, if you need a pin or two, there's Tom. He can sell you. That's actually that was what the email that I initially sent was exactly about. So this is awesome. But so should we be? Should we be speaking of journals? Should we be hoarding Tomoe River right now, or or like do we have do we have time? Are there like years of you know years of stockpiles left before uh, before it's all gone? Tom, I would I would hoard toilet paper before Tomoe. You went dead. lost your audio again. Lost your audio. What did you say? You I didn't know. Oh. Hold on just one second. You're back. I missed in. that. What did I you back say? Up. And the band plays on. Oh, for some reason, the like, text the So weird. The new one? No, the uh, the the uh, Bluetooth thing. Hold on one second, let me just do this. 
technology. Yeah, technology, right? That's that's why I said I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like exactly. Let's see. If if you can hear us, we can hear you. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, so hey Ben, did you get the answer? Not yet, but well, definitely we'll we'll start hoarding all all paper goods, but uh, and would never misuse Tomoe River if we run out of the former. But uh... well, uh, a little story on that. Uh, when I heard about this, a friend of mine told me about this uh, was going to happen, so. Uh, he invited me to join in, and we bought, uh, I think it was like 10,000 sheets of paper from of Tomo River paper from Japan. And so we split it. I got five, and he got 5,000. So just in case they stop making it, whatever, I've got stacked full of paper. I thought I heard they did. They did stop, no? Did they, did they stop it, Tom, for sure? Or they're they're not making the same Tomoe River anymore. Yeah, I think with the with the newer version, they're making uh, or or that they made some slight changes to the original. Uh, I, th I think especially the sixty eight GSM. I think or uh, and it just like the comparisons that people were showing. It just it has like slight difference that I think most people are going to look at at a in a less than you know in a less than favorable way. Uh, but I mean, I like look at it, I'm like, it still is probably, even with the newer version of it, I think it still is like one of the best papers that you could use with fountain penning. Uh, but it's just when, it's just a matter of actually seeing it in action and seeing it, um, you know, like being able to test it out and play with it and see an actual product made with that newer paper. People are gonna complain about it one way or the other, because no matter what, they're going to have it as, uh, well, it's not as good as the old one. Now, if you really want to order in bulk, I'm going to give you everybody like a, a, a tip here. When you call distributors, you don't ask um, about the pricing. You ask what is the minimum unit buy. And if, by asking what is their minimum unit buy in on it, you're you're approaching the distributor in a different way and so they'll take you seriously if you wanted to buy something in bulk but anyway the, our paper came it was shipped over and uh we got it and the rest is history and uh got it at a, at a real good deal so yeah i've got enough when i'm did i'll let uh, mr announcer send you all some paper i won't need it <laughs> so Okay, so Tom, how many people work at Goldspot and at Ink Journal? Uh, at Goldspot, there's about, I would say, on a good day, there's about like 15 to 20 of us. Because you know, sometimes we have people who are part time. Um, with just Ink Journal, it's just me and, and Mrs. Ink Journal, just that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's it's small all around because that's you know just it, it, it's just you know we, we service a very small niche and you know we're not like let's say a jet pen that I think jet pens is probably one of the biggest in our uh, you know our our segment that would have they have like a, a sprawling office that we probably have maybe like 40, 50 employees but um, you know being that we are you know, we're, we're, we're still a small business. It's like, you know, we, we have a very, we have what we need uh, to accomplish what we come out to accomplish, so. Are y'all open on weekends? No, no. So the, uh, well, actually, what, during the holidays, we will, starting this, uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we'll actually be working one day uh, during the weekends too. And that's just only for, you know, the, 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 the last part of December. Um, that's just to kind of like keep up with the flow and just making sure that people's orders get shipped out in time for Christmas. So, so what is the hottest pin that is selling right now? Oh, Larry, you know, I do these, I, you know, I do these videos every month. So, so I, I always, I always like to cover this topic. Um, right now, uh, it's the retro 51, uh, the twilight snowfall. Uh, it's, a, it's an exclusive that uh, it's one of our biggest exclusive lines that we sold that we sold this year from Retro 51. 
1,225 pieces, and in the first few days, we sold through half of them already. It's just like Retro 51 is like crazy hot brand, but also with the pen itself, it's got, if you've seen it before, um, but it's a, it's a rollerball pen, and it's got the uh, ombre effect, so it goes from like a dark blue to an icy light blue, and then it's got like a, a pearlescent metallic gradient, uh, that also has snowflakes that glow in the dark. So it's like a very fall, I mean, not, not fall, it's a very winter themed uh, type of pen, perfect for you know people. And we just allow people to order as many as they want to, as opposed to certain other releases and limited editions, which are usually limited to like one or two pieces, but we ordered so many because we want, we knew that people were going to give them this gift. So like, it, you know, it always came up every single time we would have some of these releases where uh, somebody was like, well, I just want to order one for me and then order one for, you know, a family member or like buy it for somebody else. But like since some of them were just like limit one per or limit two per, you really couldn't do that. So with this, it was just like, just as many as you guys like, you know, the, the people are going to buy uh -oh. them and try to flip them on uh, you know, on eBay anyway. So, you, you know, you really can't do anything about that, but uh, just let people enjoy them as much as they can. Okay. Got Tony here for you. Hey, Tom, uh, just a question about that um, retro. Do you think that part of the, part of the mania for retro 51 this year, and it seems like it, they've come out with such great designs. I know the Andersons have uh, been, had a close relationship with them as well. Uh, and, you know, the fact that they're probably going to, in production at some time in the near future. Do you think part of the, the run on them is the fact that people know we're not going to be able to get these any longer? And uh, I mean, they're, they're cool pens. No, no, no. I'm not taking away anything from that, yeah. but could that be part of it? Uh, I, I would think absolutely the, the, the idea of the scarcity and the, yeah. um, you know, as Tony, you hit right on it. it it's like everybody's thinking that this is going to be the end of Retro 51. Uh, I still don't, even even as like one of their better retailers, uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm really hoping, like fingers crossed, that, this, that it will be continued by somebody buying the company and just keeping on like so that they, all the employees that uh, like the designer Richard and uh, Lupe and like all the factory that they work with because they just produce uh, some of the best pens that are out there in terms of like their, their theming and uh and just and just the popularity of it is just off the charts right now um but you know it was kind of a trend that i i saw it kind of increasing as it went along because this isn't like i mean a lot of a lot of retailers have really kind of got on to this year and really have gone crazy about it but for the last few years like we've been working more and more with them uh to produce limited editions like the skyline series uh, the coffee, which uh, I saw uh, Adam put a link uh, to in the uh, in the chat there, um, and also uh, you know we did the pizza pen this year. But there's but there's been a lot of like we've been working with them often to just produce these new special editions or or retail exclusives. Um, but the but you know we knew that this year especially being that we don't know what's going to happen, like we had to be like all right, well we need to get all of our good ideas that we were sitting on and just, just blast them on out there. And they were thankfully very receptive about being able to do that because, uh, you know, in years past, they've said, oh, you know, let's, let's just limit it to four this year. Let's just limit it to four. We don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to do like too, too many of these limited or, or retailer specific runs because then they would just be inundated with them. But since they got rid of their regular product catalog that they usually would refresh twice a year, all they've been doing is either limited editions or retailer exclusives. So they had no, there is no like, you know, let's say like last year they had the tire treads, they had the uh, the sports themed ones, they had new, uh, you know, World War II airplane ones that they, yeah. that they introduced, the Corsair was one of them. And they didn't do any of that this year because they knew that they were going to be uh, ramping down operations. And they just let their retailers just like, okay, whatever you want to do, we'll just do it. And then also like release their poppers as much as they have been releasing them. So, uh, but yeah, that definitely, definitely has like a, a, something to do with the collectability about them is that this is the last year, but uh, you know, in terms of, you, you still have to release, I feel like when you're, when you're making up a pen, you still have to release one that's going to be uh, really cool for somebody to buy and collect. It just can't be like, oh, we'll just put anything out there, you know? Uh, real quick, 
then I'll let anybody else talk. But uh, uh, this was in 2015, I think. Uh, it was Jim Hines, myself, Mr. Announcer. Who else was it that we went to Dallas to meet? Uh, remember Vanessa Pins was out there? Yeah, there were several from the Fort Worth Pins group. About yeah, 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 yeah. Francisco was there. Yeah, Francisco and the Fort Worth Pins group. Yeah. So uh, we met uh, Vanessa out there, and uh, I bought this Retro 51 Rollerball. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it pretty good? Uh, uh, but it has, it's been sitting in this tube since 2015. I have not opened it up yet. So why did I buy it? I, I've got other uh, uh, tornado uh, retro pins, but I don't know. I, I you know, it's just a time capsule, maybe. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's it's still intact. Can you believe it? And yeah. every day I look at it and I say, open it. No, it's a time capsule. Yeah. John, this would look good on your desk. Oh, you're yeah. off for audio. For me? Tom, lost it. Nope, you're gone. Is it, it's, can you hear me now? There you go. Now wow. I can hear you. Wow. Okay. It's weird. Okay, yeah. Uh, which So which one is it? This which, is uh, the uh, Tornado Retro 1951 Rollerball Pin Green, the VRR-1314, if that makes any sense to you. Okay. Yeah, it's the, the green lacquer, the standard green lacquer. Yeah, yeah. So it's still in there. I mean, it's got a refill somewhere for it. But anyway, that's kind of odd, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Get your heart out, Frank. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and ink guy is looking at this pin. I want that rollerball. I'm going to crush it. You know? So, okay, anybody else have a question for Tom? Don't be bashful. Oh, Tony again. I'm, you know, I'm never bashful. You know, I'm never bashful. I'm going to continue. I'm, I'm well, not, as bad. not, gonna never, I'm not bashful this, either. This, this never stops for some reason. I don't know why. It's the Italian thing, I guess. Uh, Tom. Not, maybe, maybe Doc can help you over there a little bit. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, Tom, I bought a I bought a pen from Gold Spot uh, this, this last year, this year. And uh, and uh, you guys are great. The service is great. Uh, and uh, I appreciate it. And I love the pen. Uh, and now I never thought because I'm I'm into a lot of the Italian pens, the Visconti, the you know the the Omas and all that. And I had never considered this pen until I went into our local brick and mortar store here in Kansas City. And in Kansas City, we have a little small brick and mortar, just one store. Mm -hmm. And uh, they happen to have this cross peerless, and it was only in a roller ball. And I said, I, I love this, the weight of this pen. I love the, the feel of the, you know, the, 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 uh, the tactile feel of that, uh, you know, the, the, of the pen. And I, I said, I, they, didn't have a, they didn't have a fountain in, in stock. And so I went, uh, went online and you guys had a great price. Uh, and I'm just curious about the, the cross peerless. Are they, the 125, the, right. the medalist, are they, are they, making any other or that's that something that i rarely see them online anywhere yeah the uh cross peerless is a, is an oddball of the cross brand because it right. actually has a sailor nib on it right. right and sailor usually doesn't make uh first of all sailor makes nibs for their own pens but they they only make nibs for other brands pens like very few and far between so cross right. is one of them and monte grappa is the other uh, they've made Monte Grappa uh, nib. Uh, they've made nibs for Monte Grappa before, um, and really, there's uh, other than that, just the Peerless line. There really hasn't been any like move to put like Sailor nibs on any other uh, versions or varieties of cross pens. I think it's just because of that that fact that the Peerless is like sits atop like their entire uh, product catalog is like their you know their their premium most premium pen. Um, that they do that sort of special treatment to it. Not that cross nibs are necessarily, you know, terrible nibs to write with. They're right. they're good, um, but like they're not known like at less like a sailor nib would be. They're not known for that like exceptional level of quality like sailor are. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a it's probably it's it's also odd for like because like most sailor pens are also not like huge chunky heavy pens right. like that peerless is. So right. it really does give you something that's unique in the market where you have. A sailor nib that's on this really large, heavy type of pen, uh, but they've been, let's say, coming out with 
I, I you know, I, the last Peerless I think I'm thinking of is the Darth Vader one that right. they've made. Uh, yeah, Darth Vader. Um, yeah, got and then, a Tokyo, a yeah, Tokyo. To Tokyo. Uh, that was a limited and, edition. Yep. Uh, I, but, I, just, I really love the pen. I, it's, I, I like have I get big hands, so I, the the pen is perfect for me. Yeah, that's a it's it's a great it's a great size, and like the weight is is perfect for you know someone who likes a really like heavy pen. Yep, real nice. But thank you very much for your uh, your your service. You guys do a great job up there. I appreciate <laughs> it, Tony. Thank you. Well, right now, what is the big seller as far as journals are concerned? Is there one that's really just hot popping right now? Uh, you know, it's uh, journals are, are, you know, not really like the, the bread and butter of things um, because they are, let's say, less, I would say like less of a, of a splurge item because like you would, let's say, just buy a journal and it would take a longer time, I think, for most people to fill a journal than it is to, let's say, snap up a new pen. Uh, because like new pens, they're bright and shiny and sometimes they're very limited, but like journals could be around for, uh, uh, you know, the same journal you could buy now, it'll be around for like the next five years. It's like not, it's not going anywhere. Um, but I, I, you know, as far as like what I really enjoy using, I like the uh, Endless Recorders are fun uh, because they have the Tomoe River, the 68 GSM, uh, which I, I mean, size and, and the paper quality and everything and the, 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 the stitching and stuff is great. Uh, I just actually started to try out the the Colorverse, uh, the new Nebula Premiums, uh, which I thought were pretty neat because the plain ones have an actual like format card, uh, similar to what I, we used to do with the uh, the handmade Tomoe River notebooks that we offered on InkJournal.com. They would actually put these format cards in these two. It's like about 192 page, like they're really nice. I don't have one up here with me right now to to show you, but. Uh, it's a really nice thick journal, and they don't put Tomoe River paper. They put like a 90 GSM paper that's that's pretty thick. Um, it's got a lot of tooth on it, uh, but it handles fountain pen ink like a champ. Uh, so it's no bleeding, no feathering, like hardly any show through. Um, but it doesn't quite have that same color oomph and the shading and sheen dramatic quality that Tomoe River paper does, but still a pretty good serviceable journal too. How about the Lordstrom uh, 1917? I remember when that first came out, it was really hot. Is it still uh, a big seller or is it slacked uh, off? I, I, you know, I think that's really part of the bullet journaling crowd. And there you go. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I kind of still, still see it as part of that market rather than like the, the fountain pen enthusiast market because of the fact that they have been taking some liberties with like their paper quality. And I've, I've, not that I've experienced this myself personally, but like I've heard that some people have been getting some issues with their uh, their quality control with the various like the new the newer notebooks that are coming that are being introduced um, that they're not as good for fountain pens as like let's say getting a Rhodia web notebook or ones that are made of Tomoe River paper. Uh, but like I had filled up a Loich term like I probably would say like. Uh, three or four years ago as a bullet journal yeah and it just it just really like when you wrote on it like it did handle ink well like it didn't feather uh you know bleed through or anything like that but it just kind of also just drained the the like brightness of the color and it didn't really have as much shading or sheen visible as you would a different uh notebook